In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. These are scenes from a much different Egypt than we have been shown in our history books. Showing a very buried city under the sand. Pyramids built right on top of ancient tree stumps. And a sphinx that looks much different than the face we see today. And when I say built on top of ancient tree stumps, just look at this map from Cairo. Let's take a little closer look onto the top right of it. All those pyramids right on top of flat top mountains, or as we know them here, ancient trees. Everything has been reshaped in this world we know, mostly in part to hide our true past, our true origins, the true purpose of these structures like the pyramids. I think they were once part of an advanced civilization's free energy network, and they definitely go a lot deeper than we see. We have just started on burying from the last reset. What do you think the true purpose of the pyramids were? Let me know in the comments. Question everything, friends. Until next time. It's funny because I used to think at one point in time that the Egyptians, or mainly everybody that built the pyramids, built them because they came from mountains and they just built pyramids because the pyramids represented their old homes. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not the case, but it used to be something that I really thought. But this was interesting. I've never seen this map before. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, so I'm not one to follow conspiracy theories or anything like that, but this is a little too obvious, and it's kind of insane. So as you can see, Ice Spice is at the Super Bowl, and they keep putting her up on camera, and I can't help but notice that she has this weird necklace on, right? Now, I don't know if I'm tripping or not, but is that an upside-down cross, bro? It, it breaks my heart because I love I Spice. Like, I actually enjoy her music. Like, as you guys see here, they're at the game right now. They keep showing her on, and I swear that's an upside-down cross. And what I'm about to show you is actually the scariest one. This is where I was like, hold up, something isn't right. All right, so this is a video of somebody at the Super Bowl while Taylor Swift is taking a drink Right, so if you see it, you just see Taylor Swift chugging a drink. Everyone's going crazy, right? But if you zoom into Ice Spice, like, look, again, I'm not, I'm not a, a crazy conspiracy theory guy. Guys, look what she does with her hands. Bro, she's legit throwing up. That, I'm pretty sure, is a satanic hand gesture. And then she throws up her upside-down cross necklace. This is just sad, bro. As far as Ice Spice goes, I don't know. That did look like an upside down cross, and it did look like she was representing uh, a symbolic symbol with her hands when she was on screen. So it's hard to tell. I, I feel like a lot of musicians and actors and actresses do this kind of stuff because it just gets them more attention. That's, that's my theory behind it. This UFO was filmed over Sweden just yesterday. After I saw this, I found images of another UFO from yesterday, but in Argentina, and it looks exactly the same, exactly the same. After this video, I'll show you those Argentina images, and then I'll tell you what I think, Pushkis. Now that video was pretty clear. Let me show you the images from Argentina. You see this right here? Let me get closer. Do you see the similarities yet? Because I do, but let me get even closer. Look at that. Look at that. It's identical. It's the exact same thing. Except the previous video was Sweden, and these images are Argentina. Both taken on the same day, thousands of miles apart. To me... That looked like the Silver Surfer just surfing across the sky. But all jokes aside, that did look like a UFO, but it did not look extraterrestrial. It really just looked, it, I would classify this as a UAP. And I think that was a man-made one at, at that, because it really looked not out of this world. That kind of looked like something that was made here. And I'm not sure, honestly. I don't know what it could have been, but it was very good video evidence if it was a UFO because that was pretty clean.
Leave a comment down below on what you think it was. Maybe it was a UFO, maybe it wasn't. Okay, welcome back to the Upside Down. We're going to take a look at the moon in Perigee. Now, I'm going to show this in slow motion as well. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know what's going on here. And solar eclipse for five seconds. And here it's going to disappear over the horizon. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm going to go through this in slow motion too, just to kind of see what's going on here. Okay, and here comes the slow-mo. Slowing it down. I'll watch when it gets right before the edge of the sun. It looks super transparent, which is just strange. If you don't know what perigee is, perigee is when it passes closest to the Earth. And the edge. Oh, eclipse. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think this is strange, but thought I wanted to share it. Saw it on another TikTok channel, so here we are. I'm pretty sure this is CGI, but if it's not, that is crazy. Like, that was really good editing that looked very real. The only thing that kind of gives it away for me is whoever edited the video makes the sound effect when a total solar eclipse happens, and that kind of is like, nah, that doesn't happen like that. But I don't know, maybe it does when the moon's that close to Earth, but that definitely didn't look like that was possible. That was intense. <laughs> Okay, uh, Owen. Owen. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, run, 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 run. Okay, uh, Owen. Owen. Oh, okay. Um, run, 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 run. I played that one a couple of times because of how real that looked. I don't know if that's fake. If that's not fake, that is horrifying, and <laughs> I don't think that I would be able to, like, contain myself, but an amazing find if it was real. I just really want to know, is it like a, a salamander? Is it some kind of ancient dragon? What is that? Because if that's CGI, that is amazing CGI. That is really good. They have multiple angles. It all looks so fluent. Everything about it looks so real. I don't know if this is fake. Leave a comment down below letting me know because I would like a little bit more clarification on this video because I'm kind of thinking that this is real. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. Guys, you'll never guess what I found in the woods today. I was out for a walk and I noticed there used to be a bridge to get onto this island. I thought I'd try and find a different way onto the island, so I followed this abandoned railway track to see if it went over the river. Luckily it did, so when I got to the other end, I just had to climb this sharp metal fence and then I saw it through the trees. It looked like some sort of pyramid, so I thought I'd investigate. I noticed there was this path of rugs leading to it, so I thought I'd follow the path. When I got down there, I realised it was more than just a pyramid. It was a mini village. I started to explore, but I saw a few sinister things lying around. I mean, look at this guy. As I walked a bit further, I saw this model dinosaur. He was quite cool. I was trying to be quiet because I wasn't sure whether anyone was here or not. People were definitely living here. I could see seating areas, little cooking pots. And I can't lie, this guy made my heart stop. He scared me. <laughs> It was a pretty windy day as well. These sheets were blowing around and I kept thinking people were behind me. I then saw this hut and I thought, I've got to have a look in there. Sorry guys, there's a lot more to explore of this village. I'm going to have to make a part two. So this is part two of exploring the creepy village. So as I said before, I went to have a look in this hut. I was so scared there'd be someone in there when I opened the door, but... You can see me like creeping through slowly, like a horror film. Just a drying room. A cool log burner though, they've made it out of a barrel. Whoever built this place is really creative. 
This isn't on private land either, it's abandoned wasteland. I noticed this area was blocked off. It's either some sort of living area or bedroom area. I'd guess there's probably a bed in that hut at the end, but I didn't want to go and invade someone's space, so I just had a look from the outside. I noticed there was a lot of these Buddhists around as well, or Buddhist symbols. Let's have a look in this little hut here. What is it, a toilet? No, I'm joking. I know it's not a toilet. I'm doing a voiceover. Cool though, little wardrobe. Look at that, freshly washed clothes. All right, let's go and see what's inside that pyramid. Oh, one minute 22. I'm going to have to make another part. Sorry, guys. Okay, so this is part three of exploring the creepy village. Let's see what's inside this pyramid. I couldn't see a door on any of the sides, but then I noticed on this side there was a little flap. It looks like some sort of mini temple or meditation room. But then I noticed to the left of me, there was this. Please be a grow, please be a grow. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, no grow, just a little bedroom. I'm assuming it's homeless people that have built this village, but they're the most creative homeless people I've ever seen. I mean, they've got scrap metal piles, woodwork areas, washing lines. They've got fire pits. And I think this is even a shower. It looked like they'd been growing vegetables as well. It was at this point though, I noticed all the leaves had been swept off the rugs. So there were definitely people still living here. I thought it was time for me to head back. I went ahead and played all three parts all in, in, in a row so that there was no stop in between. I really find this kind of stuff interesting. I'm pretty certain that he's right. It's probably just where Hobo Pete lives. I mean, it's kind of not right to plunder through their stuff, but it was still an interesting watch nonetheless. I would have just been terrified that the hobos were going to attack me out of nowhere for evading their privacy. They're living pretty all right out there. I mean, for all things considering, but they have privacy. They have like places to stay. Like this was a pretty nice little setup. I'm not going to lie. If I was a kid, I'd have a field day in this. I'm sorry. They just found a what under the water. There's no way. This just sounds ridiculous. The more, the more I look at it, it just sounds more ridiculous. Scientists have found an underwater ancient volcano. And apparently this underwater volcano is literally teeming with life. The team led by marine biologists arrived at the mound off the Pacific coast of the country. Now, of course, pretty crazy finding a giant underwater volcano which has never been documented before. But that's not the crazy part. Of course it's not. Because these scientists have said that they have been left absolutely speechless after finding the ancient volcano covered in giant eggs. Covered in just giant eggs of some random species. He gets even worse again. Scientists say they saw some kind of strange creature weaving in and out of the rocks on this mountain. They said this creature's like nothing they've ever seen before. They couldn't fully see it, but it was absolutely flipping huge. Now, what is in these eggs? I don't know. They don't know yet, but they're probably going to find out very soon. Honestly, what is going on? 2024 already? What in the world could they be? Like, is it shark eggs? Is it some kind of octopus? Like, what is it? I would like to have seen the eggs. I thought, I think that would have been pretty cool. If there's been a follow-up to this story, go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know because I've not heard anything of this yet. There is this very strange type of angel called the Ophanim. Ezekiel describes them to be these wheels within wheels, almost like a vehicle, except this thing is alive. The Bible describes them to be covered in these eerie eyes, which is kind of a mystery because even though the Ophanim are alive, Ezekiel really makes them seem like some kind of unidentified flying object. Now, Gabriel is an archangel. He has this very human appearance, and believe it or not, the Bible never actually mentions him having having any wings. What's very interesting is that the Bible doesn't actually say that Gabriel was an archangel. Even though this is mainstream knowledge, this piece is only found in the book of Enoch. But what about the Nephilim? Genesis 6-4 says that there were Nephilim in the earth in those days. So what did they look like? There is this ancient book called the Book of Giants. It's the story that speaks of these fallen angels who come down to Earth. They bring both knowledge and absolute havoc. But what really blows my mind is just this one sentence. It literally says that these angels took 200 beasts of the field from every animal, from every bird, 
for miscegenation. Miscegenation is a form of crossbreeding. And in this case, it's like genetics. It's the very highest form of science. And according to this book, these angels would have been mixing and matching different animals to create something new. You see, now the question is, what would a fallen angel possibly want to create? I really enjoy the looks of biblical accurate angels. I think they're extremely interesting by design. They're just fascinating and almost sound all out of this world. And I, I really think that they are machines. I feel like the angels that they were described are just machines. Like who's to say maybe back in the day when people witnessed these beings that they just didn't know what a machine looked like that had a whole bunch of light shining on it and things like that. That's just kind of what I think personally. But it is really interesting and I always enjoy these types of videos because I like learning about angels and things like that. I think they're really fun. I just that. found something out and basically these goggles were made with a chemical cyanocin or something. And the soldiers were wearing them and they were seeing things. The gunner was like shooting in the air at nothing. What do you see right now? And he's like, how do you not see this? They're like giant demons flying beside us. What? And they're like, what are you he's got most of his facts wrong. But the reality is just as interesting. Hi, my company actually sells those Dyson and Aura goggles. And over the past few years, I put out a ton of material on the history of them and what they're actually capable of. Last year, I put out a video detailing documents that I received from the U.S. Naval Academy that detail the experiences that soldiers were having in Vietnam with these original night vision scopes. I'm going to replay that video for you now. And if you'd like a pair of these amazing goggles, there is this very strange... I just that. found something out, and basically these goggles were made with a chemical cyanocin or something. And the soldiers were wearing them, and they were seeing things. The gunner was, like, shooting in the air at nothing. What do you see right now? And he's like, how do you not see this? They're like giant demons flying beside us. What? And they're like, what are you he's got most of his facts wrong, but the reality is just as interesting. Hi, my company actually sells those Dyson and Aura goggles. And over the past few years, I put out a ton of material on the history of them and what they're actually capable of. Last year, I put out a video detailing documents that I received from the U.S. Naval Academy that detail the experiences that soldiers were having in Vietnam with these original night vision scopes. I'm going to replay that video for you now. And if you'd like a pair of these amazing goggles or the original documents that I talk about in the video, you can find them on our website. The link's in my bio. Did soldiers in Vietnam see demons? In their night vision goggles? <laughs> the answer is yes, they kind of did. The same questions always come up when I start talking about Dysionin. People always want to regurgitate the urban legends they heard about Dysionin on the internet. One of these stories is from years ago where somebody got on a podcast and claimed that during Vietnam there was a new type of night vision goggle that allowed soldiers to see demons and entities out in the jungle and it was driving them mad. As much as this sounds like an exaggeration, I actually have some documentation here from the U.S. Naval Academy that indicates that is exactly what soldiers were reporting. The document is called The Secret of Seeing Charlie in the Dark by Richard A. Ruth of the Department of History of the U.S. Naval Academy. He indicates that though they used the new scopes in the field and they offered a tactical advantage, the users who used them endured physical, psychological, and emotional stress unforeseen by military leaders. Now, why would an optical tool give profound psychological stress. Let's read exactly what he says. In other intimate mythologies of the war, the eerie green landscape generated by the starlight scope was populated by ambiguous entities. Fatigue, stress, and fear exacerbated the tendency in some soldiers to misinterpret the images they saw through the scope. Soldiers described dragons and other supernatural creatures appearing from within the writhing phosphorescent murk of the starlight scope landscape. One former medic recalled using a starlight scope to monitor hundreds of dead enemy bodies after a particularly intense firefight, only to discover in the morning that the corpses were just a hallucination. Now, do military medics usually hallucinate uh, hundreds of dead enemy corpses laying on the ground, or was this person seeing something quite unique? 
One patrol boat captain actually said that viewed in the eerie green glow, everything on the bank of the river seems to move. Bushes become animate, and the device transformed the nightscape into something akin to an LSD hallucination. I have another article here from the Army Research and Development magazine about another type of night vision called a thermo viewer, which was even more advanced than the starlight scope from the other article. Starlight scope enhances the uh, ambient light at night, while the thermo viewer didn't need any light whatsoever. And in these two pictures, it actually has a soldier sitting here in foliage and leaves, and you can see what he looks like through that new technology and how eerie it really is. And this was being made public in 1972, so who knows how long they had been testing it before that. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to point out the fact that neither of these technologies used red lenses. I don't know where the red lens meme came from, but that is not a thing that ever existed. I'm here trying to show you what did exist. Now, the tone in these articles is very typical academic debunker nonsense where they narcissistically try to gaslight people out of believing the things they witness with their own eyes. Like the army medic who saw a whole field of dead bodies that just apparently were apparitions. Apparently, the soldiers in Vietnam are easy targets. It's easy to write off the things that they reported as stress or drugs or, you know, an unhinged mind. But in reality... They were making these claims. They were saying that this technology was allowing them to see very interesting things out there, and it was inexplicable to them. Seeing very interesting, energetic things that don't seem to have any physical body is very typical of what myself and others have experienced with things like our Dyson and Aura goggles. And also uh, the night vision device that I actually built here that's built with a night vision module from an old tank. I use this for astronomy, and I've seen some very interesting things in the sky using this, though it is different technology from the starlight scope. And there is a historical precedent to using filters in the infrared range uh, to witness things in the sky. Uh, the work of Trevor James Constable. Trevor James Constable was a UFO experience. Her started in the uh, 1950s at, with the Giant Rock events and George Van Tassel. And he, uh, his work went all the way through, I believe, the 2000s when he passed away. And he was using optical filters on his camera to pick up hidden things that he claimed were living in the sky. Constable's books, They Live in the Sky and The Cosmic Pulse of Life, describe his work uh, using infrared filters. To now, here's some of what he was photographing back 70 years ago with a 35 millimeter film and infrared filters. The optical filters that Trevor James Constable used haven't been available for many years. But now that I've been making the uh, Dyson and Aura goggles, um, I'd like to offer more optical technology for people to experiment with. So I'm working with a manufacturer now to get a batch made up. So if you're interested in using these unique filters to potentially photograph UFOs in the sky, go jump on my mailing list on my website and we'll let you know when they're available. I'm going to go ahead and link uh, Museum of Terrets stuff in the description down below if any of this was of interest to you. I am very interested in those Dysonian glasses. I kind of want a pair for myself. They are a bit pricey. They're like $200 on his website. But they are interesting, and I've heard of the stories of the soldiers back in the day seeing things with their night vision goggles and, and whatnot. I'm very interested in this. If anybody out there has a pair of these goggles, please share some information down in the comments because I would love to get some of that footage just to see. So I'm going to take a moment here, and I have had a couple of people with some videos that they sent to me personally through my email of things that they've seen and captured around their house or wherever they're from. A lot of this is UAP footage and it's really interesting. So let's take a look at some of our subscribers content. Now what is that? What the hell? That's a sunset, and that's 
house. What is that? Looks like two objects. Focus. I mean, to me, I can't really quite explain what that was. This is a subscriber of mine. Their name on YouTube is Angel Power One. I'll send a link down in the description. You should also see a link pop up right around here if you're on a mobile device or a computer. Check out their videos. The only big recommendation that I have for you, Angel Power, is any of your videos that you have that are like these, I would really recommend putting them in a playlist because it makes it really easy to go through them. Luckily for me personally, uh, I was sent these videos through email so I can just find them really fast. But they do have some good content on their channel that shows some of this unexplained stuff because honestly, I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was maybe a plane that was being reflected by light out in the distance or it, it really didn't look like it though. So leave a comment down below what you guys think that was because honestly, I really don't know what that was. That didn't look like a plane and it wasn't quite clear enough to tell if it was a, a whatever it was. Definitely a UAP. Like disappearing. What the weirdness? How is that possible? Holy crap, man. That's funny. It was like, all right, I'm out. That was a good shot. I'm not going to lie. It's very interesting just to watch the clouds or whatever it was just engulfing the moon. And that was, that was pretty good. I think it was just clouds, but it was like, that had to have been some dense clouds. See, these lights you cannot see with your naked eye. That's a recording in my night vision. These you could not see with your naked eye. I don't know why it's not focusing on it. But these lights are bright and you think you can see them, but you could not. Very interesting video. I would have liked to have seen the night sky without the night vision. And then a night vision shot to, to show the lights. I'm not sure what that could have been, to be honest. I really don't know. My only guess, and this is a, a hard guess that is probably not the case, is there could have been planes that were flying around out there. And they have LED lights on their craft. And LED lights, even if they aren't on to our eyes, they shoot out infrared light. And you could be picking up infrared signals from it, but I don't know. I, I'm very curious as to what that was. If there was no lights out there in the sky, what could have that have been? I'll leave a comment down below on what you guys think it could have been. I would have liked to have seen the night sky without the night vision and then with the night vision just to see the difference and like there is no light. But other than that, very interesting video. All right, so that was all the videos that I have at the moment. I'll show more because I have, I have like, five videos that Angel Power One sent me through my emails that I am going to go through probably in the next video as well. These were very interesting and the other ones are pretty interesting as well. So with that being said, if you guys would like to submit any kind of videos to me that are kind of within this realm, leave a comment down below 
and I will provide my email address right here so that you can actually like send me emails with these videos if you don't have a social account like YouTube or uh, X or TikTok. That way I can see the videos and I can react to them on here and share it with the world because I think things like this is really cool and I would like to see more people sending in their own experiences and questions that they have and not just a, a combination of all the videos that we see on the internet in general. I think this was really fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.